wonder what the weather's going to be like tomorrow. Huh. It's going to be another spring day. Or is it going to be something different? I don't know. I have a job coming up later this week. Um, the woman, they have the new house. They get no, a tube in the house. They got two wire receptacles. They got circuits that are blowing out. Not sure what I'm going to run into. And she wants to be there, so I gotta, I'm got i going to be there in the morning. And then she's going to come in the afternoon. So I, I should, by then, I should be able to like, give her a good idea as far as what's going on in their house. I know that they had some rewiring done. I know they got some arc faults over there. I think it's the arc faults that are tripping out. So I'm going to see like what's going on. I'll, I'll probably pull a couple devices to see if they're... See how they're wired, you know, because if like if they're backstabbed, that's bad, because then that could trip out these arc vaults easily if they're just backstabbed. But if they're under the screws and they look like good connections, should be good there. But then I'm gonna see like what they're using. Like I know the kids got their entertainment centers and they get some computers and things. So I'm gonna fool around and see like what I can do to trip out the arc vaults. See if I can kind of trace that down. So they get the same problem in the kitchen. They got a microwave keeps blowing out. And she says, it keeps blowing the circuit, keeps blowing the circuit, but it's really the arc fault. She's knocking the arc fault out. So these arc faults, uh, you know, like why do, why do they, you, we need to have them in every, pretty much every circuit in a house now, right? Every circuit in the house. Like I'm a licensed electrician. I install a new plug in your house. I got I to gotta upgrade the circuit to an arc fault circuit. I could put the breaker in or the arc fault device in and maybe no problems. Or I could put the device in and then just have a rat nest of problems. You don't know what you're going to walk into. It's crazy. And I learned from talking to a friend of mine who's an inspector that i had done some of these jobs where the person wants to change out a plug, right? So you change out the plug. And all new device, all new outlets that you install have to be on an arc fault circuit, even on an existing circuit. So you change out the device, and rather than put a, an arc fault breaker at the panel, you put a device in there. And I, and I was always on the assumption that that's it. You have the arc fault receptacle, looks like a ground fault receptacle, you know, with the buttons on it, but it's an arc fault. So it knocks out if there's any problems with the way the current is flowing in the wires. I understand what a ground fault does. It, ground fault reads the current going out and back, and if there's a fluctuation, it trips. So that way there, if you're part of the path back, the power going out that one wire is going through you and then coming back. So that means the wire, the balance on that line is not equal, so then it knocks out. That's how that's how a ground fault works. I'm going to research and find out like why, how does an arc fault actually work? I know what they're supposed to do. So, like, if there's a loose connection, loose connection, right? The arc fault picks up on that, boom, trips out, right? However, this, these things trip out on electronic circuits. Appliances will knock them out. What do, what do, what do you do, right? Lady spends $1,000 on a refrigerator, brings it home, plugs it in, bang, knocks the circuit out. What do you do? You gotta return your refrigerator. So, like, it causes problems because, like, who's who's gonna fix it? I mean, I haven't wired a new house in years. And back when I did it, you needed arc faults in your bedrooms. So maybe you have a three bedroom house, maybe you get three arc faults. Today, you need arc faults pretty much in every living space in your house. It kind of like doubles doubles the cost of your circuits. More than doubles the cost of your circuits. And then you get the trouble troubleshooting afterwards because you might go through the house, everything's working fine, but then people move in and they have stuff, right? Could be a vacuum cleaner, could be a refrigerator. And what I suspect in this lady's house, it's the game stations, the kids' game stations, and all their stuff, their electronic stuff. Because I've seen it. It's like, they get all kinds of electronic stuff going on. And I think they're knocking it off. And her biggest concern is that when the power goes out, it knocks the smoke detectors out, too. And so she's like, 
well, can we put those smoke detectors on a dedicated circuit? It's like, well, we could. I mean, there's nothing stopping us from it, right? But we normally don't want to do that because if you ever have a, a circuit problem with your smokes, you want to have it on with like a lighting circuit or something. So that way there you'll be like, oh, this doesn't work. I want to know what's up with that. So that way there your, your smokes don't lose power, then the batteries die, and then you have no smoke detectors or fire protection in the house, right? So you don't want to, you don't want to like take the, take the smoke detectors and put them on the wrong circuit. So I got to come up with a solution for her as far as like these, these um, circuits that are knocking out. And I know, I know it's the arc faults, you know, it's, I know it's the arc faults. So it's just going to be kind of like a um, cat and mouse, mouse game. And then, um, and she's got some two wire circuits. And um, in the past, you, you, you could put a ground fault on a two wire circuit with a U ground. So you could have a three wire plug. So like you have a plug that has just two slots in it to plug into, and it's a non-grounded circuit. So like you have originally knob and tube. So you just get two wires running through your house and those just feed things. Then they came out with a sort of kind of like a Romex, but it just had two wires in it, non-grounded wire. So those were used. And so like all your plugs in the house would be just two wire plugs. And that's cool, right? The code still allows knob and tube and two wire circuits, right? And when you go to upgrade a plug, so if you go from a, if you just take a, a two wire plug out and you put a two wire plug in, no problems. Except you get an arc fault, right? But if you put a, a three, you know, U ground, you know, two two prongs and a ground wire plug in, and you only have a two wire circuit, right? You can do that with a ground fault breaker. So that way, there anything that has a U ground that you're plugging into it, it's being protected, you know, for any faulty situations that could happen. That could be, you know, an unsafe situation, right? Great. But all that stuff's coming to an end. Now, the tubes coming to an end. Two wire circuits. Two wire circuits are coming to an end. Um, put in a three, you know, a U ground plug in on a two wire circuit. It's coming to an end. So pretty much the standard is to, um, if you got existing stuff and you don't touch it, fine. But if you're going to install new things, you don't touch that old stuff. You got to install new wiring. You know, the new Romex. It's got the hot wire, the neutral wire, and the ground wire. <laughs> Back in the day, before Arc Falls, we used to run a, a three wire. So that'd be like a um, 14 or 12 3, which would have a white, black, red, and a ground. We would actually run two circuits out on that line, right? You can't do that now with with arc faults because arc fault needs its own independent neutral. And you'd go crazy on some of these older wiring jobs where they might have a junction box that has a couple of neutrals coming into a, a junction box, right? You get a junction box and you got a feed going in and out, a feed going in and out, right? So you get two different feeds in that box. Now they should, they could be the same potential, right? So you get phase A and phase B. So you can have the same potential on two different circuits coming in that box, right? With two separate neutrals coming in that box. But those neutrals, if they could happen to be tied together, right? That'll knock out your rock fault. Have fun finding that. So yeah, arc faults, I don't know. Arc faults are kind of like, I don't really drink, right? But they make they make you want to drink. Arc faults. They, they're, they're, they're nasty, nasty, nasty. I, I have a couple jobs now that, a couple of new, new kitchens and additions that went in. So those are all gonna be arc fault circuits and you don't want to fool around with any old wiring you get problems as it is with, with new wiring. Never mind existing or old wiring. No, don't don't even think about it. If there's an existing circuit, don't be like, oh, just tap off this and go. No, because it's got to be our fault. Keep that in mind, our fault. It'll go all the way back to the panel. 